I just want to welcome you and tell you how excited I am that you're here. You may be worried about Sharon, but, but on the Global Impact Celebration, she, she lets me do all the talking. And she is in her dream seat, which is in the balcony up there. So, so you, can, you can greet her afterwards, and, and she is just so happy to be here today. She's also demonstrating something that I, I want you to be aware of this morning, and that is that uh, it's flu season, the, the coronavirus is beginning to make its rounds. It, it, it's nothing to be scared about, about, it's nothing super serious, but we're going to be taking some precautions. And among those, you'll see some high alcohol content, hand sanitizer around the church. And if you get a chance, just take some, put it on your hands. Do the thing that my wife tells me I always should do and I'm really lousy about, and, and that is wash your hands and wash it for the full 20 seconds. I just stick my hands under the water, rub them on my pants and call it good. That, no, that, that doesn't qualify. So do the full washing and we're going to avoid shaking hands as well. Just fist bump or, or bow of people and let them know that you're keeping them healthy. And what I'm constantly condemned for is if you are sick, stay home, don't bring it here. And, and I always come sick, but I promise this time I won't. So, so this is our Global Impact Celebration. We're just really, really excited to have our missionaries here today. They'll be doing the preaching. If you heard them yesterday, they just got incredible stories of how the, work, the Spirit is working through them to, to spread the gospel message to the lost, the abandoned, and the scattered. We'll also be taking our faith promise today. So you have a card in your bulletin. If you haven't already filled it out, pray about it. It's an opportunity to make a personal commitment to how much you're going to be given to foreign and local missionaries. This is one of the most amazing churches I've ever been in, in terms of mission support. We probably give close to $200,000 every year to various mission causes, locally and internationally. And celebration is seeking the scattered in the event. Those who don't know Jesus Christ and our missionaries here in the front row are just doing an unbelievable job of doing that. But you're doing it here as well. And, and so I'm very excited this morning that we'll be doing a baptism. Julianne Taylor is here with us. And one of the great blessings of my life was being able to be a part of baptizing my own children. And Mark is a youth pastor and associate pastor here, and so he'll be a part of, of baptizing Julianne. And, and I don't know whether she finds that thrilling or not, depending on how old my kids were, whether they thought it was thrilling or not, but I know it is a great blessing for Mark. And Mark, would you explain a little bit about what we're going to be doing here this morning? Sure. Um, yeah, it is a great privilege and blessing. Uh, to be able to participate, actually, in the baptism of all my girls, uh, Julian being the third. And I'm so grateful that each of them has chosen to trust Jesus and declare that in baptism. julianne has been waiting uh, a long time for this day, and it's finally come, so we're excited with her. Uh, baptism's like a gem with many facets that together reflect God's beautiful grace to us. The water itself represents the cleansing we experience when we enter God's new covenant family, the family of the forgiven. Because baptism marks our rebirth into God's family, it's also a commitment to live a new kind of life in line with our new family values. Peter describes it as the pledge of a good conscience toward God. Going under and arising from the water signifies our dying and rising Christ. We're buried with Christ so we can be free from the rule of sin and death. And we're raised with Christ so we can live a new and righteous life under the rule of grace. Most amazingly, baptism portrays our immersion into the life of God. As we're baptized into the water, so we're baptized in the Holy Spirit. Immersed in God's life, power, and immortality. Paul says, we were all baptized in one spirit into one body, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. So if going under depicts our death to a life of sin, at the same time, it depicts our immersion into the life of God. As we're drenched 
with His Holy Spirit. The Spirit is God's greatest grace gift, which marks our inclusion into His body and our new identity in His family, the Church. Julianne, I'm so thrilled that you want to live as part of God's family. So, we're going to put you in the water. Pastor Kim's going to ask you some questions and have you take some vows about living as God's child in the family of faith. So, I'm going to ask you the questions first so you don't have to stand in the water while I ask the questions. Because <laughs> they carefully warmed it up and it's warm compared to outside, but it's not warm. But that's where the guy in the old life would be born again to the A little shock value. Yeah, a little shock value. Julianne, this is very much a public commitment of the promises that you have made to God to live with Him forever and be part of His kingdom. So I ask of you, will you leave behind the evil in this world and turn away from your sin? If so, say yes. Do you accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life and trust wholly in His grace? Yes. Will you covenant with God and these people gathered here to protect the unity, share the responsibility, serve the ministry, and support the witness of this church and whatever other church you're a part of. Yes. But baptism is very much a joining of a community. It's, it's coming together with us to serve the Lord God. And so I ask the same questions of you. Will you believe behind the evil of this world and repent of your sin? Yes. yes. That's your answer. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Do you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of your life and trust wholly in His grace? Yes. You're getting better. Will you covenant with God and with Julianne to be there for her, to care for her, to answer her questions? If she needs something and she comes to you, will you say yes to her? Will you be the body of Christ, raising up Julianne to truly serve the Lord God and dwell in His house forever? If so, say we will. We will. So Mark, will you pray over the water? Me, would you? Father, we thank you for how you love your children. Thank you that you sent your son to share our death so that we could share his life as your sons and daughters. Thank you, thank you that you pour out your spirit of life and power upon us in baptism. May your presence permeate this water so that as Julianne is buried and brought up in you, she may receive your holy life and power, to live as your daughter, washed and forgiven. Assure her of your love and grace. Help her each day to die to sin and live for you. Lord, quench her soul's thirst with your Holy Spirit, and let your goodness and love pursue her all the days of her life. And help us, your church, Lord, to disciple Julian and to help her grow up in love. We ask this in the name of Jesus, who died and rose for us so that we could die and rise in him. Amen. sisters in this work, 
fellow laborers in the field who come to share how God is using them in mighty ways to reach the abandoned and scattered sheep of this world. Bless them, Lord, for they are such a blessing to us and to you. We pray for Pablo. We pray for his church as they seek to reach out both in their home city and to the Roma of Slovakia. We pray for Dwight and Sarah as they seek to raise up and train pastors to reach the unreached populations of Mexico. We pray for them that they might establish eight new churches in the next three years, which is the vision you've given them. We pray for Tomas and Maria and Brenda as they seek to carry the gospel to the mountain people of Mexico, those whose needs are so many, yet whose trust is not easily won. We pray also for the abandoned and scattered here in the Tri-Cities. We ask the Spirit to speak to each of us now. Lord, is there someone that you have placed in our heart, that you have placed in our life, that we interact with regularly, that doesn't know Jesus? Lift them up to us now. Spirit has given you a face or a name. I ask that you pray for them every day this week. Ask the Spirit if there's a word you might share, a deed you could do, a way that you could demonstrate God's love or even share the good news of the gospel with them. Continue to pray for them all week. For they are the sheep here in the tri cities that God is calling us to see. <coughs> Allow the Holy Spirit to guide you in prayer. And if you don't know what to pray, if the words aren't there, then, then just say the words of the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray when they didn't know what to pray. The prayer we're about to pray right now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I don't know if any of you were, how many of you were blessed to be here yesterday, when our missionaries shared about how we can support them and pray for them, about the, the truly amazing things that that are happening in the mission field out there and, and the very real difficult challenges that they face. We've asked them to speak briefly this morning, sharing where they see the abandoned and scattered of the world and, and where they see God's spirit at work reaching out to them. And then it's kind of like the appetizer that really gets you ready for dinner. Because what we want you to do after this service is go right across to the fellowship hall we have a great luncheon prepared for you. And then I've asked them to, to really be honest with those of us in the American church. That, that at one time were one of the powerful mission sending forces in the world. And right now have become a mission field ourselves about what they see. And, and how we can better reach this mission field of Tri-City. So I am really both excited to hear what they have to say and a little scared. As I hear how they may point out some of the ways that, you know, Emperor, you're not wearing clothes and you're not quite doing this right. So, so I am excited for that time. I hope you join us then. Right now we have Dwight Hires who's going to come up and share a bit of the work they're doing in the seminary, training pastors in the Baja region, an amazing work they're doing to reach all of Mexico. And, and realize that Dwight's the one com coming up, but, but sort of like me, Dwight married up. And Sarah is a real is, is a real strength of this team. She's doing absolutely incredible things. And more than that, she lets Dwight know that Dwight, you've done enough and it's time to go sit down. So, you know, when it's time to sit down, watch her, she'll raise her hand and, and you'll know it's time. It is an honor to be here with you. I have been here with you for about six years. Sarah was able to come without me once since then, but uh, it's a joy to be back. Just to tell you some of the things that God is doing. For instance, uh, it was just a few short years ago, I think 11 years ago, 
when we began working with a little church in El Papalote of 15 people, first thing we did that they rejoiced over, we gave them a little piece of plywood and the pastor could finally keep the chickens and dogs out of his house. <laughs> Rejoice. It, it's amazing to see what's happened in those years. That church now is a church of about 150 people. They have planted seven churches from that church. From that church, they have sent out 17 people to serve as pastors and missionaries. We expect to send another four this year alone. God is doing wonderful work as we've seen hundreds of people come to know the Savior. What happened for them was they switched their focus from the 15 that were gathered to the many scattered that God had brought their way and began to change their focus to reach the indigenous, the overlooked of Mexico. And as a result, there was an open ministry to them that radically changed the life of that church. And uh, it's, a, it's a great, great joy to see how God can change things so rapidly and so radically. Uh, I have the privilege of serving in, under the registrar of our seminary. My wife is, is the registrar and she's my boss over all the things that I do in teaching. And so I get to teach uh, classes to seminary students. I also minister personally with different ones of our graduates and discipling them and becoming more effective in their pastoral roles. And I get to host about 10 teams a year of people that come from the states serving the people of our region, building helping, teaching, enabling the church to prosper. Those are the tasks that I get, get to be involved in. But sometimes it's good just to see a specific story. One of our graduates, his name was Diego, married Luce Elena. Luce is just a real trooper herself. They were driving home from the store one day, and there was a couple walking along the road and something about it said we should pick them up. They stopped and picked up this Mexican couple and they began to tell their story of their son who was trapped in alcohol and, and um, drug abuse and they just stopped and prayed for him. In the process they, they felt, well we better take him all the way home because they lived another 15 miles beyond them, and they just took them all the way home to a different community. <coughs> that experience, that divine appointment of God, has led to the establishment of a new church, and uh, they are now seeing other people come to Christ as a result of them just listening to the prompting of the Spirit. And by the way, the son has experienced liberty over drug and alcohol. And he is receiving training. Praise God. There is wonderful things happening there. Those are some. That's one story. I'd love to tell you more. We'll be out there. We'll be talking about some other things this afternoon uh, as we gather. Okay? Thank you so much, Dwight. Pavle. Come on up. Pavle is is in Slovakia, although God has sort of led him on a, a almost an Abram-type journey of, of, of leaving behind his, his original hometown and living as a stranger in, in many strange lands and, and reaching out to the abandoned and scattered, uh, perhaps first in Sweden, although maybe you were the abandoned and scattered there, but, but then on and to Ukraine and Slovakia and to the Roma people as well, but, but I'll, I'll let you share. Thank you very much. So I'm very glad and delighted to be with all of you here. And I want to thank you for your prayers that you are praying for us and uh, supporting us, the ministry, the things that we are doing. And I think that after many years I'm coming here, so all of us know that Slovakia is in Europe, not in Asia, not in Africa, in Europe. <laughs> it is the former uh, Czech Slovakia. So I'm bringing also greetings from my wife, Henriette, and our three kids. 
um, briefly to explain you, uh, I was uh, serving before I became a pastor, I was serving as a missionary with Ambassador for Christ International. So it meant that in uh, many churches we would go and train the churches how to go and equip others to reach out to the people. For the last 10 years I'm a pastor, uh, pastoring one of the biggest churches in Slovakia. It's uh, in, in region uh, 30 miles from the capital city of Bratislava. Uh, as, a mid, as a seminary student, God put a burden in my heart to start to work with the Roma people. So it's mean that we started there uh, with no any witness for Christ. And so by the years, as I can see, how God has changed their lives, uh, these families, and uh, everything went so forward. So it is incredible to see how God is doing these things, these works. And two times or three times, uh, it depends on how they have a time, we go there together with my wife and our team for two or three days to train and to teach their kids and to be with the families, you know, to share the common things with them, to love them, to show them respect. Because in their cultures, in the Roma culture, you know, uh, if they want to, uh, you know, receive you well, so you need to go to visit them in the house where they are living, you know, uh, to be with them, you know, to share their pains and problems or things and to pray for them. And so we see over the years so many people came to know the Lord Jesus personally. And as I see young kids here, you wrote some boys, uh, we started with them when they was five, six years old. And now most of them, praise the Lord, are now in the churches, serving with the youth, worship singing, and in many other areas. So God is so good. Also, <clears throat> the other thing which I'm involved, it's I'm working half part in Teen Challenge Center. So we have also so many wonderful testimonies of how God stopped people on their way to destruction, that God has changed their lives, and it's uh, my heart is full with joy when I see these lives which are changed, that now they are back in the society, they find churches, they find people who share with them, who pray with them, and who find a reason for their lives. And I want to finish with a specific story. Uh, Last year, one lady started to come and visit our congregation, and uh, <clears throat> one Sunday, uh, she walked, uh, she stand up and she said, uh, well, I have a, f a friend, good friend of mine, and uh, we are together in the workplace, and uh, she said, it was three or four days before the Christmas, the old central heating has blown up, and almost half of the house has burned up. And she said simply, I'm not asking from you that you help her with some money or things, but if you we'll simply pray for this family. Well, we said, okay, so we'll pray. Say the name, we'll pray. We don't know them because they are living uh, 30 or 40 miles from, from my town. And then, as we said, this is a possibility if you would like to help to this family. And uh, on my big surprise, we were surprised that uh, over 1,500 euros the people from the church distributed to that family, and plus we buy uh, some food and things, and together with my wife and this sister, who said about this, when we went to that family to serve them, to, you know, to understand them in their pains and things. So praise, uh, pray for this family, that God will open their hearts, and really God opened a door, you know, when we pray, God is moving, in many, many different ways. Can you imagine that in that village where they are living, one dentist who has an office there, he, she said, well, I'm not using these offices anymore, so for free, for free you can stand over eight or nine months. It's God is doing the miracle. So I want to encourage you, each of you this morning, that if you're willing to be involved in his work, God will open many, many different ways. As Pastor Kim said, I will never thought that I would become one day a missionary or to become a pastor. I was somewhere lost in Sweden, even though I was raised up in a Christian family. But when God stopped me, I saw what is the reason to live my life, to share the good news with the people and to see how people are coming to the Lord. This is one of the greatest joys when you experience 
when someone finds the Lord, when someone is doing the water baptism, and when you see changed lives, you see lives of the families who are changed, this is what will fill your heart, and you will be greater. So each of us can do step by step, can do little bit, and God will bless the things that you are doing. Tomas and Brenda are also here. They've been working with the Taramahara natives in the Copper Canyon. They've also been reaching out to, to other mountain people in just incredibly courageous ways and, and have stories that, that, that are, are, are just amazing. So um, we probably actually need a second mic here, so we didn't think this through very well. So. Los textos que están aquí detrás de mí en Ezequiel 34, 6 al 11. I believe the scripture that we have here behind us in Ezequiel 34. Para mí son muy difíciles. For me, I, it's hard to understand here. Y casi no las quiero utilizar nunca. I don't want to even, you know, read them sometimes. Porque traen un mensaje tan difícil de entender. Because vivir. it brings a, a very difficult message to understand. Pero... Usted lo han elegido y But I believe you choose it, so now we have to speak about it. Nos tenemos que aprender aquí. So it's, I believe it's something that we have to learn. Cuando hablamos acerca de, la, de los que están descarriados. I believe when we, when we talk about the people who are lost, who are scattered. En mi caso como pastor. In my case as a pastor. Entendí que son aquellos que no han sido alcanzados con el Evangelio. I believe that they are the ones that haven't been reached with the gospel. Aquellos que por alguna razón que yo no sé. Those for the reason that I don't understand. Han quedado aislados. They've been um, left alone. Y que no han sido privilegiados. And they haven't had the privilege of the gospel. Do you think? Que, que son, Momento. Que son aquellos que, que han uh, eh, crecido eh, sin la fe en el Señor Jesucristo. They're the ones without uh, the faith of Jesus Christ. Sí, la fe de Cristo. Without the faith. Y quiero decirles que esas gentes a veces no están tan lejos como yo me imaginaba. And you know what? Those people are not so far, far away as you think. Descubrí que donde yo vivía estaban a unas 500 kilómetros. I discovered that uh, they were just like 500 kilometers for, from where I live. En versículo 6 del 34 de Ezequiel. Uh, in chapters, in verse 6 from chapter 30. It says that the sheep are very, you know, in the high hills. Y parece que me está describiendo a mí de alguna manera, ¿no? And it's, it's, it seems like it's describing me. Eh, encontramos que en las montañas más profundas del estado de Chihuahua estaban las ovejas que no habían alcanzado a oír la palabra de Dios. I found that uh, they were very far away in Chihuahua, you know, the people that haven't heard about Jesus. Pero mi pregunta es por qué se han quedado. But my question was why were they left Hace alone? Hace mil años que el Evangelio llegó. You know, it has been thousands of years that the Do, gospel. Dos mil años. Two thousand, you know, years that the gospel <laughs> came. Por alguna razón. And because of reason. <laughs> no sé por qué están ahí. I don't know why they're still there. Sufriendo, you know, they're suffering without the gospel. Pero una cosa. But also I discovered something else. Que esas tribus o naciones that those tribes or nations that are there reclaman de mucho sufrimiento y dolor. You know, sometimes they're, uh, they're waiting for pain and suffering. 
No es fácil ir. It's not easy to go places. Es muy difícil. It's hard to go places. Quien quiera ir a esos lugares. Who wants to go to the scatter and to difficult places. Tendrá que estar dispuesto a sufrir. They have to be willing to suffer. No solamente cosas eh, físicas o materiales. Not only material or physical things pero, we're talking here. Pero la vida. But also, you know, talking about your life. Cuando llegamos a los Tarahumaras. I remember when we arrived to the Tarahumara. No encontramos a mí. You know, we didn't find any friends. Aunque la necesidad estaba latente. Even the need was there in front of us. Y el enemigo nuestro. You know, they were our enemies. Y no nos querían. They didn't want us there. Tuvimos que insistir en amor. You know, we really had to be, went there and tu be in love them. Tuvimos que sacrificar. We needed to be, you know, make sac sacrifices. Yo recuerdo que una de las cosas que yo necesitaba urgentemente. I remember one of the things that I needed urgently. Era nueve mulas. It was nine mules that I needed there. Do you know mules? You know what I'm talking about? Yo necesitaba nueve mulas para poder cargar con las cosas para esos lugares. I needed nine mules to carry things to take to the to the Fat Almana people. Milagrosamente las obtuve. And it, it was a miracle. I I got them. Y cuando estaban las mulas listas para viajar. And when the mules were there, ready for the trip. Y empezamos a cargar en ellas arena del río. And we start carrying all the sand and everything for the construction. Me di cuenta que las mulas empezaron a morir en accidentes en los, en los caminos. I started seeing that the mules started dying on the paths because they were so difficult. Así es que era un problema. So it was a big problem that I had in front of me. Un problema donde dormíamos. A problem where we were sleeping. Usted no conoce los piojos y las pulgas. You don't know, you know, the lice and the, and the little um, piojos. You know what piojos is? <laughs> Cosas que They're in your head. <laughs> empezamos a vivir como ellos. You know, bugs that were there, we started living like them. Voy a platicarles algo. I'm going to tell you a little story. Entre los médicos que íbamos, estábamos eh, viendo a la gente. You know, we took some doctors and we were seeing people there in the, in the canyon. Y una, niña, una señora trajo a su hija. And one uh, lady brought his little girl. Y dice, este, tenía otra niña y se murió. And you know, and, and the doctor start, started seeing the, the little girl and the, and the lady share, oh, I had another little girl with me, but she died. Y murió de la esta. And she died with the same sickness that, that this little cabeza. girl had. You know, she has a headache all the time. Y cuando el doctor abre el pelo de la niña, and when the doctor opened the hair of the little girl, encuentra sangre en su cabeza. you know, she had a lot of blood in her head. Pero muchos piojos que andaban ahí. But a lot of lies were there in her head. Los piojos habían acabado con la niña que había muerto. You know, those little bugs ate the head of the other little girl that had died. El doctor dice, pues con jabón y eso. So the doctor said, well, you have to wash her hair with soap and, you know, put different things. Yo le dije a la señora, pues con jabón. And then I turned to the lady and said, the only thing you have to do is wash her hair. Con jabón. With soap. <laughs> y ella dice, no, que no tengo para comprar. And what she responded was, I don't have soap. Cosas como esas. You know, things like those that you hear. Son cosas que causan dolor. Those are things that, you know, really cause you pain in your heart. Pero después de algunos años. But after a few years. Hay una foto que no sé si ustedes la van a ver, pero este año pasado al final del año casi. You know, um, probably this year, at the end of last year. Este, tuvimos una reunión con los Tarahumaras we had cristianos. A, we had a meeting with all our Tarahumaras that been saved during the years. Y teníamos cientos y cientos de personas. And we had hundreds and hundreds of people there. Eso para mí fue el gozo. And for me it was a great joy. Puedo recordar los años de tantos sufrimientos. To remember all the years of sacrifices. Y ahora poder ver los frutos. But now to see the fruits. Pero estamos yendo a otros lugares. But now we're going to other places. A otras etnias. To other, to other ethnic groups that haven't been reached. Esperamos que ellos acepten a Jesús. You know, we're praying and hoping that they can accept Jesus. Sé que lo único que puede cambiar la historia de sus I know that Jesus Christ is the only person that can change their communities. La semana pasada. Last week. Fui a una etnia que se llama Huicholes. We went to this ethnic group, a uh, group called Huicholes. A un pueblo donde no permite el cristianismo. You know, to a town that they don't, they don't let the, the Christians get si in there. Si alguien se hace cristiano, lo pueden matar o lo corren de ahí. If you become a believer, they kill you or they kick you out of their village. Recuerdo que en el, en el fondo de, de, de la montaña está un pueblito. 
I remember at the end of the, of the canyon there, there's a little village. Y visité una familia que se convirtió a Cristo allá viva y la corrieron por ser cristiana. And I visited a family that got saved and they kicked them out of their little village because, you know, they accepted Jesus. El señor se llama Marcelino. His name is Marcelino, the guy. He's a man of uh, probably 60 years old. Él y su esposa ya son grandes. Him and grandes. his wife, they're old like, like I am. Y <laughs> Cuando la comunidad los corrió por ser cristianos. And when the community, you know, kicked them out because they were Christians. Sus nietos que son muchos. Uh, their grandkids that it's a big line. Ellos estaban muy tristes. They were very sad. Sus abuelos los corrían. You know, they kicked out their, their grandparents. Ellos lloraron y, si, y siguió a sus abuelos. You know, they cried and they said, we want to follow you. So they went with them. Pero los abuelos los corrieron y les quitaron todo lo que tenían. But you know what? They took everything that they had in that village. Sus tierras, sus they marcas, took their land, their casas, cows, their houses. Y la única razón es por ser and the only reason it was because they became Christian. Cuando los visité, when I visited them there, y en una casa horrible, they live in a very ugly place. El Señor es católico y no les quiere rentar porque ellos son cristianos. You know, the, the person there, it's, he's not a believer, you know, and he doesn't want to rent. Así es que están ahí viviendo afuera. And they're living outside. Con ese grupo de niños con hambre. With that bunch of little kids, you know, with, they're hungry. Vienen gente de la sierra y dicen, si, te, si dejas el cristianismo, tienes todo lo que dejaste allá. And they come, you know, people come and say, if you deny Christ, you can have all your things back. Pero ellos no lo han hecho. But they haven't denied their, you know, Christ. Qué dolor se siente. You know, you feel bad when you're in front of someone like that. Y creo que mi cristianismo es puesto a prueba ante esa gente. And then, you know, I, I, I just think of my Christianity and it's put in, on a test, you know, when I'm in front of those people. Esa gente son gigantes. You know, those are giant people in Yo front of me. Yo sé quién aquí está dispuesto a que le quiten todo por Cristo. I don't know who here is willing to leave everything or lost everything for Christ. Pero hay gente que lo está haciendo. But there's people who are doing that in, in this type of year. Sentí tanto dolor. I, I, I felt pain. Que fuimos a la tienda más cerquita hace la semana. Just last week, we went to the closest store. Y compramos lo que pudimos para traer. And we bought some food to them. Un mensaje grande. It was a great message for us. Muy doloroso. You know, it was a painful message. Tengo en mi mente hacer dos cosas antes que yo me muera. I have two things that I have in my mind to do before I die. Alcanzar una etnia que se llama Lomarajío, que está a tres días de camino donde vivo. To reach an ethnic group called the Lomarajíos that is like three days from where I live. Y poder alcanzar los huicholes. And also go to the huichol and y poder do animar a esos que están siendo oprimidos. Y poder abrazarlos. Y poder abrazarlos. And just, you know, hug them to y decirle que son de una familia. And say that they to a y family. que no están solos. And they are not alone. Espero que oren por nosotros. Pray for us. Gracias. Thank you. Muchas gracias. It really makes you think about what you're willing to give up for your faith, to give up for Jesus. What, what an incredible, incredible model. Join me in prayer. Oh Lord, we just, we, we just praise you that you have called us your body to do your work here in this world, to reach the scattered and abandoned. We, we, we thank you for the gifts and the givers that are here. We just dedicate them to you that they might be used to, to share your life, to share your gospel into every corner of the world. We, we thank you for the missionaries who are here with you, with us. We pray your blessing upon them that they might be blessed in ways that they continue to reach out with your light into the world and help us to do so here, we pray as well. We ask all this in the name of, of your Son, Jesus Christ. Yeah.